is Kenny Roy. I, um, I own my own studio. It's called Arconics Animation Studios. It's in LA. It's a small boutique, and um, I do character animation there. Uh, right now, the industry is very interesting. Uh, 2009 was a very difficult year for a lot of uh, vendors. A lot of places had to close. Um, but what I'm noticing is that um, clients are getting a little bit more savvy in terms of like pipelines, and uh, they're getting very, very you know, educated. They're getting, you know, they're getting pretty picky, and they and they're starting to, you know, really uh, pick pick on like the little things that we used to think that were safe. You know, like modeling detail and, and stuff like that. Like even down to rigging. Um, I, I get some clients now that you know are wondering, you know, how how did you do this? Did I get the same you know quality of rig that you did on this and, and that and, and whatever? So um, you know that's always going to happen. Clients are going to get more and more savvy. Um, you just have to roll with the punches and see if you can uh, um, you know just uh, squeeze a, a profit out of you know out of the small work that comes your way. We've been pretty good um, kind of leading the curve in terms of uh, doing things you know cheaply and, and the most cost effective um, is a nice way to put it. Um, for instance, I don't have a lot of um, you know middle management that is you know running projects. I run everything myself. I can because we're you know still so small. Um, so I know that that will have to change if we if we grow and, and expand and do you know more and bigger work. But for for the time being, um, it's just being lean and you know always bringing people on who understand all the parts of the process and not just you know not just one little thing um, where there's going to be a bottleneck created later. You can do more and more and more with smaller and smaller teams these days. Like we have a TV show. Like I never would have thought that a team as small as mine. I'm not going to say how small. <laughs> I would never guess that a team as small as mine could do all the um, visual effects for uh, an episode of a, of a TV show. Um, and and we do. We have a uh, a couple um, seasons already under our belt with a, a show for Sci-Fi Channel. So. Um, you know, you can do a lot more with with uh, with people now. Uh, the software is getting so it's more robust, so you can do more within one package. Um, and and people are training themselves. They're training themselves up, you know, to know you know as many facets of the industry as they as they can. So I don't have to worry about you know someone getting to the end of their their work day and saying like I, I can't do this. You know, I, I'm I'm done now. I can't I can't help a lot. You know, help this along anymore or anything like that. Um, well, I mean, I just do it every day. You know, that's probably the, the, the trial by fire is probably the best way to, to learn, really. Um, but um, you know, you just have to kind of uh, stay current with at least the software package that you're following. Like, you you gotta you know know what's coming up and what's going to be new for like, let's say you use Autodesk Maya. You just gotta know. You know, these are the features that are coming up for us. How is that going to save us money? How is it going to save us time in the pipeline? Uh, things like that. We've been trying for you know ever since we started. I think every animator sleeps with like a script under their under their pillow. So we've been trying as as much as we can to align ourselves with um, film companies um, to produce uh, uh, feature films. Um, so I have a couple scripts out. Um, people have read, and we're pitching shows um, to networks, and I'm um, trying to get a, a TV show off the ground as well. So if any of those stick, then you know we'll definitely be able to put our our episodic pipeline to the test and I, I think it's really really strong but um, it's going to go through a little bit of growing pain and, you know to try to scale it up a little bit um, an episodic pipeline is basically you know how you crank out like 20 episodes of, of the same show because um, there's so many reused assets you need to make sure that all of your assets are readily available they're they're um, accessible to all the people that need to use it and there's such high volume um, on, on episodic I mean if you imagine like 22 minute episode and let's say there's um, um, normally you go like either 13 or 26 episodes per season so you have over 500 minutes of animation to do for a season of a show that's that's like how many that's like what like six movies you know what I mean so like if, if you're going to do you tackle that kind of volume you make sure that your pipeline can support you know all of that all those files going around, everyone knows what they're doing, and, and, and I'm sure that ours does. Um, but um, it, it is going to be a little bit of a shock, you know, when we when we start up on it. The industry is always going to try to push itself to be more quality faster. I don't think that there is. Uh, I think there is a limit to like humans, basically. You know, a, like a person can only, for instance, critique a certain amount of shots and and note a certain amount of shots 
per day, for instance. So it'll be no use if we have, for instance, animators um, or even like motion capture studios that are working faster than you can even watch animation, for instance. Um, there's certainly parts of the, the, the pipeline like rendering um, and compositing and finaling that um, still take a really long time. Um, but I think we're going to probably in the next five years hit the limit of like what humans can do and we're going to be coming in and sitting down at computers and using software that like doesn't slow us down at all. So probably in the next five years. That might be actually a little bit far out, maybe in like the next three or four years.